Hello, welcome to Flip. So today we are on chemical bonds and this one serves as an introduction so there's uh, no um, learning objectives here. Okay, but I think it's important for you to know the basics of understanding the logic behind chemical bonding before we actually go into each individually. Okay, let's begin. Uh, so chemical bonds is really just a force that binds atoms together. For example, I have a yellow atom here, a green atom here. Okay, there exists this force, okay, uh, if the conditions are right to bind them together. So what will happen is actually something like this. Okay, They will be bonded together now with probably a single bond here. Okay, So this one now it becomes a compound Okay, as we learned in the previous video. Okay, So basically it's just a force, it's uh, invisible, you cannot see but it exists. Okay, it, it just binds them together. And this is because in chemical reactions old bonds will break and to, uh, new bonds will form. So what do I mean? From this example, I can also do this. For example, in the previous bond, okay, uh, the yellow uh, atoms are bonded to each other. So this is a uh, molecule, correct? And this one, okay, let's just put the same one. For the green one, okay, you can see that the orange bond binds the two yellow atoms together and binds the two uh, green atoms together. But when chemical reactions happen, this one breaks and this one breaks. Okay, so what happens is that new bonds will form now. All right, so between the yellow and the green, there exists a new bond. Yellow and green exist a new bond. So what happens is this actually. So individually, the yellow will be paired up with the green atom now. Okay, so I think this is a very good illustration of what's happening. Old bonds break. This one, this one break, and new bonds form. Okay, the red one. And this will result in the, the products being uh, different from the constituent elements and having different properties. Okay, uh, they have different properties is due to different uh, bonds. As in the different nature of bonds give them different properties. Okay, and the purpose of atoms forming bonds is to achieve stable electronic configuration. Okay, we will talk about this more uh, in the later part. Basically, this is a summary. In compounds, they can have two forms of bonds. One is an ionic bond. One is a covalent bond. In metals, there only exists metallic bond. We shall talk about, about this in subsequent videos. Okay, let's ex uh, examine the um, stable electronic configuration together. So this is what I've drawn. Okay, Basically, ele stable electronic configuration is the same as noble gas configuration because noble gases are stable. Okay, We have talked about this in the atomic structure chapter, but I want to revisit it because um, uh, it was a bit rushed. Okay, I, I think we can do... Um, a clearer explanation also. Okay, basically, uh, what we want to achieve for all the atoms is electronic configuration of noble gases. Basically, every atom want to be like noble gas. Okay, because noble gas have completely filled valence shell, making them very stable. Okay, and how atoms can be like them is basically three ways. First one is to give away excess electrons. Second one is to ac accept electrons. Third one is to share electrons. Okay. Each of them will form different bonds. We'll talk about them later. But this is just a, a idea behind it. Okay, so let's look at the four noble gases individually. First one, helium. We notice that this is the nucleus. There's no electrons in the nucleus. It's just a circle with HE symbol, like the chemical symbol for helium, and two electrons in its orbit. So this is the nucleus, and the, this is the first shell, which is also the valence shell in this case, two electrons. Neon, this is the nucleus. Okay, these are the two electrons in the first shell, and there are eight electrons in the second shell, okay, which is also the valence shell in this case. So this is the valence shell, this is the valence shell. This is argon, nucleus in the center, uh, surrounded by two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and eight electrons in the third shell. And the third shell in this case is the valence shell, which contains the valence electron of eight. Okay, neon has the valence electron of eight as well. Helium has a valence electron of 2, okay, because it contains 2 electrons here in its valence shell. Uh, Krypton is something that you won't have to draw. Okay, You won't reach the state of 18, but I just draw it to show you. Basically, in the center, okay, uh, you have Krypton. Okay, I should have drawn a nucleus here, sorry. Okay, nucleus, um, which we have with the element symbol of Kr. First 2 electrons, next 8 electrons, next 8 electrons, and next 18 electrons, which... This is the valence shell, and with 18 valence electrons. Valence just means the outermost. Okay, so the word valence just means outermost. 
Okay, and so valence shell means outermost shell, and valence electrons means outermost electrons, which in this case are all the uh, outer axes in this case. Okay, so with that out of the way, basically we want to know that we want to form all atoms in this format. We want all atoms to either accept, accept, give away or share electrons to form this magical number 2, 28, 288 or 28818 basically. Okay, let's uh, do with a few examples. First one, okay, we notice that this is sodium. Sodium is Na, right? If you look at the periodic, periodic table, we will know that it actually is a 2. The first shell is 2, then it's 8, and then it's 1. Correct? So we can see that, oh, it's closest to, which one? Closest to neon, right? Because it's 2, 8. So what can we do in this case? We take out this extra electron. Okay, and what will, what will it um, give us? It will actually give us this one, sodium, okay, with its uh, nucleus, okay, with no electrons in it. And then the first shell has two electrons in it. The second shell has how many electrons? Eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and now its uh, electronic configuration is 2.8, which is the exact configuration for a neon and so we have achieved okay noble gas configuration of neon okay and that's what we want we want, we want all atoms to achieve this state but if we, if we just remove this uh, electron it cannot just be the same right it has to undergo some change and now it becomes a plus charge okay why is because electrons are uh, negative in nature if I remove one electron means it's a positive for the atom now makes sense right because electrons are negative in nature, okay. Imagine there's a like a static around it or something, okay. Negative in nature. If I remove this guy, now it becomes positive because I remove a negativity, okay. And now it becomes a plus charge here. So now I achieve neon configuration, which is what I want. This is uh giving away electrons. Let's talk about accepting electrons. So in this case, I have chlorine, okay. Uh, if you look at the periodic table, it's uh, actually have a configuration of uh, 2, okay, its first shell is 2, then it's 8, and then it's how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, okay, then we compare it with our list. Which one does it um, flow well with? Which one is the best, closest substitute? This one, right? Argon, okay, because it's 2, 8, 8 this is just 2, 8, 7. So what we can do is just to accept one more electron in this empty space here. Okay, what will we form? We actually form this guy, Cl, okay, with the nucleus first. There's no electron on it. First shell has two electrons, one, two. Second shell has eight electrons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then the final electron, okay, this one, it's a one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And here there's uh, something special. I use a dot instead of an X. Okay, this is to represent that the electron came from elsewhere and not um, from the original one. Because what we use in this case is X represents the electrons for chlorine and O represents the electron from elsewhere. We should talk about this in ionic bond. Okay, but just uh, accept that. Um, o just means an electron that does not belong to Cl, but in this case, it's taken in by Cl. Okay, so now it's an electronic configuration. We can count is 2, in the center is 2, and then it's 8, and then it's a 8 now, okay? And now it has the configuration of argon, exactly the same thing, okay? But as we mentioned, we, we cannot just change it, uh, the structure of this guy without anything. So now that we have accepted a negativity, uh, ele uh, uh, charge of negative charge, a uh, negative charge electron. Now it has to be minus charge. Okay, and so how to represent this guy is actually C L minus. Initially it was just C L, now it's C L minus. So similarly, this guy here, Na, now it becomes Na plus ion. This is an ion now. Okay, so this guy is also an ion. C L minus ion. Okay, and this will form ionic bond later. We shall talk about this later. Okay, and so that is the um, rationale for sharing, sorry, for achieving a uh, noble gas configuration, which is 2, 2, 8, 2, 8, 8, 2, 8, 8, 18. Okay, so in all the questions that we do, we want to see what is the closest substitute to.
Okay, the word keyword here is closest. What can we, which noble gas is the closest to our current existing atom? And we want to form that. And there are a few ways to do it, three ways to do it. Uh, basically, we can give away electrons, like what Na, NA has done, receive electrons, like what Cl has done, and we will learn about this sharing electron in the chapter of uh, covalent bonds. Okay, and that is all for um, the chapter of uh, chemical bonds. Okay, so we have learned about all this, O bonds break and new bonds form. Okay, and uh, do me a favor, please tell me to subscribe and like this video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.